Go for it. Go when you're ready. Cool. Right, I can make it up as I go along. That's per norm. Mm-hmm. Well, we're back. This is it. Season 3, Episode 1. Welcome, everybody, to Tales from the Tackle Shop. We have managed to get ourselves organised, so we're now starting off the third season. So thank you for everybody who's been watching us during Season 1 and 2. Um, nothing changes much. We've got a, a new camera, so... Hopefully yeah, you'll see us all the time. It's even worse now. Yeah, and it won't turn off halfway through, which the other one used to do. So that's about all we've got new tech no excuses wise. now. I'm Ooh. just checking everything's working because uh, it's been a while. Anyway, yeah, we're back. So we are. We haven't even spoken about this, so we're going to have to make this bit up. Are we going to do it every week or every two weeks to start off with? How well? You weren't listening to me, were you? No. 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 <laughs> Are we going bi-weekly or every every week? I can go weekly if you want. All right. So there we go. So we will be back. Well, we're sort of back to normal, so we might as well be back to normal, won't we, really? Well, we did start this off, didn't we, years ago, that's what it seems like, to do all the match results. Yeah. So weekly does work best. So, and that, Yeah, I think weekly's good. Yeah. So yeah. we've heard it from the horse's mouth, we're going to go weekly. This is all Alex's fault. No, it won't be. It'll be fine. Now, how to hear us. Obviously, if you're watching this, you know to find us on YouTube. So it's the Femme and Fishing TV channel. And for this year, we'll keep th- the audio podcast going on the Podbeam, Apple Podcasts, and the Google Podcasts. That may change next year, uh, but less, more of that, less of that, more of that as we go on throughout the season. So it's the same as it's audio on the three podcasts and obviously watching our beautiful faces on the YouTube channel. Right, now, we haven't set this up. I haven't actually seen you for a little while. No. Which has been a good thing. No, not really. Disguising, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. How have you been, all right? Yeah, busy. I've been starting to do a bit more fishing, which is good. Um, Yeah, I just, I don't know, really. Just, I don't know, I've actually looked forward to some crap weather. (laughs) 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 Looking forward to some cold weather and catching some roach and... (laughs) Yeah, just been really good this this summer, but it's been, you know, it's been knackering. But you know, I'm not moaning at all in any way. Fisheries fishing well still. It's fish mega all year. It's loads of new people into it, and it, it's just fishing's good. You know, stock yeah. slowly coming back, and I mean slowly. I've just taken the delivery of a product that was ordered in December last year. Wow. And it's just come in, and there's about 10 of them, so my container's getting full. <laughs> See, I can actually say this, because I've seen Alex in full flow. Now, us fishermen think owning a tackle shop is like, it's like a dream. Mm. But actually, it's a nightmare. Mm. Because you think you could go fishing and have all this time, and actually having seen what you do firsthand, it's the actual opposite. Mm. Because you're on call 24-7, and the amount of time that as a shop owner you have to put into the business is incredible so Mm. um yeah so when you say you've actually been managed to go fishing that's quite a good thing because over the summer the spring and the summer you were just full on weren't you with everything related to the the shop and the fishery so yeah it's that's it sort of reflects on your fishing as well yeah i bet about trying to balance the two in in the summer is 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 a nightmare you know you're not you feel like you shouldn't be fishing because you know you're too busy yeah. in the shop, and but you do want a day off, and it's sort of you, you don't know what you're doing. You're a bit lost, really. You, you know, you, it's it's a weird one, but when you have the day off, you feel guilty because you have yeah, the day I mean, off. Yeah, I just don't. I don't know. It's, it's, there is that, but it's I don't know. It's just this summer when I have fished, I just haven't done very well anyway. I've, I've been. Awful. Well, your yeah. mind's not been on it, has it? Well, it's a bit of that. I mean, the fishing in the summer, I like catching roach and that sort of thing and being busy. And there's been a lot of feeder fishing, a lot of a lot of feeder fishing and catching skimmers that, you know, people say winter time, the fish show up and stuff like that. But everywhere you go, it's just been hen pegs or if someone's not turned up next door, they've got a bit of room and I don't know, just... When I've gone, I haven't enjoyed my fishing. But now the winter league's here and it's 12 weeks till Christmas, it's like, I don't know, that's what I enjoy the most. You do really. like the winter league, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's good as well, you know, we can go back and have the draws in pubs, which I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to that, really. It's just chilling out a little bit more and 
um, yeah, just look forward to that really. Well, it's been a weird two years, isn't it? Uh, well, you're, in, you're in three quarters. Yeah, yeah, as yeah, as it's um, it's been manic, isn't it? Really, when yeah. you think about it, fishing fishing's gone through the roof, and long may it continue. You know, it's. Um, but it's I mean, good. just for like. That's the social side from your match angling. Your the pub is the place where everyone goes. Where everyone, yeah. like, all these these pubs must have suffered massively because this is where you go for the draw beforehand, mm -hmm. and this is where you're going to go to afterwards. And it's just part of seeing the friends, isn't it? Whatever your sport yeah. you're into, yeah. and you've missed all that because it's been rolling draws and you're not being able to have the banter. So um, it'd be good to get back into it. It'd be good stuff. It's not really affected the commercial fishery side no. of things. I wouldn't think as much, but. Natural venues, definitely. Yeah. You know, because I think a lot of the anglers that fish natural venues really look forward to your breakfast in the morning, having a bit of banter, and then going back afterwards. And um, yeah, that's what we. One of the reasons why we all go fishing. There's a few anglers that go fishing on their own because they, you know, that's what they want to do. But majority of people like to go with someone, yeah. don't they? Yeah. The commercials here have been amazing, haven't they? Cause, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just um, the the sheer the numbers have been amazing, and you just kept going all throughout the summer. And obviously, we're sat in the calf now doing the podcast. So the fact that they come in, uh, the guys come in early, have their brekkie. Sometimes they draw, have their breakfast, then come back upstairs and decide what mm. bait they're going to have. And it it's a really good social. So you can see why well, that's been booming, really. So that's mm. been good stuff as well. So talking about the commercials, then, because the last time I saw you, the matches were really flying, and that was probably about a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, have the the numbers still been the same? Um, I would say no, they've been lower, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Um, I don't know, since the festival, really, it, it's sort of, the numbers have been steady, but not like what they were before. I think a lot of that is because the Winter League's starting now. Um, there's big money finals and people on holiday, and it's a weird time of year, really, August and that. But, um, yeah, it's been... Some weeks is quite a few, and next week it's really low. It's it's quite weird, but I don't know really. People have got things to do, but um, yeah, it's still been fishing well. I mean, the festival was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Can you remember what the results? Yeah, were? yeah. So that was obviously the first, second week in August. The same week every year, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and um, the weather leading up to it was quite warm, and. You know, you just know it's going to fish well. And I said to a few people before, I reckon the record will go on Jay this year. And it did, first day. Ross Howard, Ross Howard had 300 and, 305, which, um, mega weight. What was it, 305? Yeah, 305, 306 pounds. And then they fished its head off every day that lake. I mean, that was sort of star of the show, really. Um, and then the second day, um, Magpie produced like we know it it can do uh ben had 391 pound ben townsend which is you know people say oh they're silly weights and stuff like that is that's you know these boys are the top of the game and they know what they're doing and it is but it's only for a couple of weeks of the year well well you get these weights in like you're going to come rock up now and catch them sort of weights um so three i think the first day ross harold won jay with 305 um, Tom Edwards won Raven with 206, round that, just over 200 pounds. And Magpie was won by, who won Magpie on the first day? God dear, thinking about it. I think it was, um, Peg 27 had 276 pounds, or 266 pounds, which, you know, considering we took all the fish out, you know, <laughs> yeah, know. and they're all in my bedroom, you know. <laughs> That's not too bad, really, is it? So um, that was good to see as well, sort of to sort of say, uh, yeah. you know, just to prove to everyone that was saying we took all the fish out of Magpie and basically that they haven't got a clue what they're on about, which was, it was quite nice, really. Um, especially as sort of, we had a real slow April, May, it was cold, wasn't it? And the fishing didn't really kick in gear. And then obviously as soon as July and August come, it's just gone. And it's like, no one's mentioned the fact that, no. you know, we took loads of fish out, but we put a load of fish back in. You know, people ain't worked that one out in their head. But, um, oh, I've got a new one for you, Andy. I've heard it all now. I've heard it all now. Right. Um, someone someone said, uh, we fished Crow Lake, and it's been designed very poorly. 
I was like, oh, right, okay, mate. So, so why is that? He said, because the sun's in your eyes. I just thought. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> I thought. What, all day? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I can, I can get it to rain. It'd be overcast. Does the dark. lake rotate as the sun goes over your head so it stays oh, in your eyes? Don't even go there, mate. Yeah. It's, um, Fishermen are brilliant, aren't they? Come yeah. All sorts of excuses. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've heard it all. Yeah. Um, and Do you get no, sunglasses now when you, you Yeah, yeah. Cry? So I, was, I nearly said, well, I can sell you some sunglasses, <laughs> mate. £30 each. Yeah. You get your mate one, I'll do you a bit of a deal. But no, it was, um, yeah, I've heard it all now. And um, so that was the first day. Second day, Ben won Jay with uh, 391. Um, Raven was one with two, 216, I think Steve Freeman had 216. And Jay was one with, who won Jay? I think it was 296 or around that, so fish well. Then the last day, the late record on Jay went again. Tom Edwards had 314, I think three, no, 270 one magpie and 198 pound one raven. So it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for people that say that, you know, that the fisher of, a lot of anglers say that oh, there's, there's a match been on the day before it won't fish the next day when you look at those waves yeah. the second day out of the three was the best day and then the second best day was the, the third, was the, day. Like, third yeah. day so all that feed going yeah, in yeah. yeah it makes it makes you sort of think doesn't it so it does, um yeah yeah so eventual winner was um tom edwards again retained his title he had uh three points Is it three no five points so is it one point each yeah, lap, so one point, uh, one point for a section win. Yeah. Um, obviously, there was three sections on each lake. Yeah. Um, and then um, runner-up was Josh Blavins, which was good to see someone different at the top there. Very consistent. He had similar score to Tom, but less overall weight. Um, yeah, and it was just, just really good. The weather was good, better than the year before. We had a washout on the first day. Everything just went really well. So How many anglers cool. were there? Uh, there was 50, 58, I think. That's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. 58. Yeah. Yeah, 58 or 57, I can't remember exactly, but um, cool. everyone but you got, got plenty of got fish. got a few some maggots, didn't you? Yeah, plenty of maggots, <laughs> yeah. plenty of casters. Um, a bit stressful leading up to that. <laughs> I bet it was. It was uh, there was a maggot shortage beforehand. Um, yeah, maggots have, maggots have been a tricky one this year. Yeah. Um, I can see the hatch though, because there's flies yeah, everywhere. Yeah, uh, there's flies everywhere now. I think a lot of that is because they're lifting potatoes. Is it? Yeah, and they're all coming in off the land. Um, so, uh, yeah, maggots have been a nightmare because of the heat one week. They're really small, and obviously demand for maggots. So, you know, the bait farms are trying to please everyone and put as many maggots down in each pit so that they can sort of fulfil their orders. So, it's been um, it's been a nightmare really, but. Not as bad as it has been in other years. Yeah. Just just smaller maggots, so it's um We've got an interloper. Yeah. 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 We've got the fly destroyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're nothing to do with me. They're not my flies. <laughs> <laughs> so um But that's incredible. Fifty eight anglers over three days. Yeah. Cool, dear. That's uh, and that's I mean uh, you won't have had a chance to do this, but did you know what like the average catch was on each lake each day, roughly? Um I would think most people got over a hundred pound every day. Yeah, I think on Jay on one day the lowest weight was 100, 112 pounds. Wow. You know, and um, we're only fishing an extra sort of half hour. We start half hour late and we finish at five instead of half four, um, and that can make quite a big difference. Yeah. You know, especially with them bigger fish. Feeding. Yeah, they know, so, don't they? Oh, they know. Yeah. They know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. That's really good. Um, sh- should we mention the Browning Day now? Because it kind of fits yeah. in. Because you had that. They had the, the festival day back in August, or festival weekend, didn't you? And then you've got another big day coming up soon as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is sort of different. It's sort of a new concept for the area, really. Um, so we were advertising it in season two, sort of back end of the, the season. Um, basically, it's the power partner. So it's, 100, I think it's 120 quid a pair to enter. So it's top money mega payout plus browning are giving sort of two poles to the winners and then like two and a half three grand poles um the idea is one person or one pair per, part of the pair will be here and the other will be on the old Neenat march so um 
points will be uh, Brown and have asked for points 1 to 60 on each venue so 1 point if you win the venue yep. 60 if you come last so that'll be interesting to see yes. who comes out on top yeah um, is that a two day no it's just one, one day. day that's just one day that's the Saturday and then on the Friday they've got their the Browning sponsored teams event here is that the 21st 22nd yeah yeah that's, that, right? that rings a bell yeah 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 because um, yeah so what we'll do we'll do something on this mm -hmm, forum mm -hmm. for the Browning day here on the Friday yeah um, we'll pops do part of a podcast and some video in as well yeah and then on the Saturday is the pairs match yeah yeah is but it is it fully booked I don't think so. I think they've got a few pairs left. I think there's 50 odd pairs booked in. So are they organising it then? So um, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sort of organising the pegging and so forth. Yeah. Um, excuse me. I think the draw will be on the Friday night for the power partner. And the Saturday's the 23rd. 23rd. So yeah. 22nd and 23rd then of October. Um, so yeah, that'll be a good day. Um, the, I know a few people have been on the old Neen and it's very, very weedy and very, very clear, but it's absolutely full of fishy. Yeah. Still. So. I saw um, Andy Shortland has made a few yeah. of them, haven't they? Yeah, the few. My dad went and him and Darren and they caught Did they? 20 pound a piece, yeah. So, cool. Must be heaving. Yeah, must be. Um, <laughs> I think they had some Bob Nud Rudd and Little Silver Bream and Roach and Perch and I think my dad lost a tench and it's just marching it. It's just. Yeah. It's only going to get better and better as the day go, as the months go on towards Christmas. So. Wasn't it end of October last year when that sixty pound weight yeah. came out? Yeah, so that would be the last weekend in October. Yeah, yeah. so it's going to be interesting. The Brown in Pairs Day is pretty much yeah, the Brown be good. Yeah, is the is the weekend before. Yeah, the yeah. Saturday before. So um, that'll be more like bypass end. So it'd be that more of a, it could be big fishy. You just don't know. It could be. Are you in it? No, I'll be obviously organising. You're doing this side too here. busy here. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to be fishing. Yeah, yeah, I'd be love to be fishing, and um, but I'll be there on the Sunday. So yeah, look forward to it, mate. Um, what else has it been? We had another festival as well, a little two dayer, um, which was which was brilliant. Um, <coughs> big weights again. I'm trying to think, who won it? God, I should be able to know who won it. I feel terrible. I can't think who won it now. He's getting old, aren't you? Yeah, I think Josh Blavins was there thereabouts. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> There's a lot going yeah, on. That many matches weekly, yeah. What's the over 60 has been like? Because that was Very a, good. It's still got numbers it, going up and up with that. That's amazing. They're, yeah. They have a, I mean, the average, is, was it, it's well over 30 each, each Wednesday, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we're using sort of two lakes now. Yeah. Um, continental style which is the best way really on two yeah. lakes. Um, so yeah, that's that's still busy. That will obviously drop a bit. The, the Still get a sort of nucleus of probably 18 to 25 that will come every week, whatever the weather, you know, which is great. Um, and then we've got winter league starting soon. So we've got an individual winter league and we've got the teams of three. So it'll be on interesting. It, on here? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, been quite a bit of interest for both at the minute, but you know what it's like when it comes near at a time people book yeah. in and then oh no sorry we can't come now and yeah but we did uh, the video of tom cole didn't i a few weeks ago yeah and that we've had lots of people look at that which is good and i was meant to do one last week with him but um illness got in the way yes so we'll try and have one on the 14th and get that out on youtube as mm -hmm. soon as possible but i think people find that quite interesting as well just mm -hmm. watching the um the whole setup from the draw people's mindsets so yeah. what i'd like to do is do one or two um sort of more natural venues as well so mm. if we can actually get you fishing or one mm. or two others because i know you're really busy yeah that's joking aside you are really really busy mm. but uh, we'll try and do that because i think the match angler's mindset is quite an interesting one for people observing to see what's going on yeah and the way they it's quite uh, aggressive fishing on these commercials isn't it at times it is in the summer yeah it's chalk and cheese yeah you know summertime the most aggressive attacking anglers do the best um and in the winter, literally three or four bits of bread, pint of maggots. That's crazy. Tin a corn will last you <laughs> nearly all winter sometimes. <laughs> Topping you know, around, yeah. It is mad. And it's, it's like angler styles, you know, anglers that win in the summer sometimes don't win in the winter because they're too positive still. And yeah. 
works the opposite way around. Anglers that don't do very well in the summer do better in the winter. So yeah. I'm sure there's a few anglers looking forward to winter, um, especially if your name's Polly, you know, every pet. <laughs> oh, well done, Polly. I was going to mention him. I mean, yeah. I've not seen him for ages. Is he all right? Well, yeah, he's all right. He's been in Ireland for about six weeks, so um, smashed it over there again, I did think. He? Yeah, did really well. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so he'll be back. Um, so, yeah, it's all, it's all on the change at the minute. Division two national. Yeah, we fished we, that. Yeah, we haven't mentioned that either. No. So you had a Daiwa tackle and baits team in division yeah. two because it's 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 changed, isn't it? Because it used to be like it used to be five divisions. Yeah, five divisions. Ago, yeah, and but then now it's, now there's just two. So so the aim for most of the teams is to get into division one, and you have yeah. to start division two obviously and work yeah. your way up. Yeah. So was that the first year you guys went in? It? Yeah, it's because the division two is always in September. It's always clashed with everything. Like September and August are the busiest two months of the year for, you know, you've got all sorts going on, especially September. Um, the Division One Nationals normally first, second week in August. So from sort of start of the season, you're normally practicing for that. But because we're a fairly new team, we haven't done the Division Two because it clashes with Ireland normally. Yeah. We wanted to do it last Just year. Just keep but your pen off that stand, buddy. Um, so last year we was going to do it but it got cancelled there was obviously no nationals so this year it was on we uh, sort of had a sort of three or four days away um it was uh you know we learned a few things out and stuff like that but um we we did enough to get through the aim was to qualify so that it didn't clash next year division one's on the trent next year which isn't far for us to travel you know it's about an hour, hour and a half um whereas gloucester's three hours away it's um it's, it, especially for me, it, I like to be quite aggressive and get the catapult and loose feed and try and make things happen. But the Gloucester Canal, I sort of, I can't get to grips with it. I've done my head in proper. <laughs> um, Is it quite deep? Yeah, it's deep. Uh, there's no shelves. It, I don't know. It's just. I think it's got some Xander in it. There's a lot of Xander in there. Yeah. yeah, a lot of Xander. But I just. It's I like 18, know. 20 foot deep, isn't it? Can be in places, yeah. 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 Yeah, especially on Hempstead Bend, it's like 15 foot down the edge. Yeah, it just drops straight off. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, we did. I mean, I drew a particularly noted area in all the practice matches. They had a feeder national on there. I even drew like 10 pegs to the right of where I drew in the practice match. And these pegs were first, second, third in the match. So it was sort of like when I drew that peg and you knew what peg you was going to the night before, I was like, this could be all right. I've got a chance of doing really well here. And got to my peg, obviously set it all up, set all the team stuff up as well. And it's just typical Alex Bates national match. Just <laughs> everything had vacated that area for the... Yeah, it's just frustrating, really. Yeah. Put a lot of effort in. Um, you know, everyone puts a lot of effort in, but just would, would could not catch a bream, you know. And yeah. that's what you needed to do to get mega points because you you sort of you're on a good good area to try and catch one and they've been catching them so you got to go for it you? yeah yeah but there wasn't the small fish there to catch yeah you know i'd rather to be honest i'd rather have drawn where i drew the week before in a real shit pit but knowing that you need to catch two kilos would be mega points yeah whereas when you're on a peg that you're sort of looking at top five in your section and you don't do that you're really frustrated you know but that's fishing that's been the story of my summer fishing, really. Yeah, it would come around, wouldn't it? I went to Lock Ken. That was. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, how'd you get on? Uh, person, personally, I did horrendous. It just properly, that was the icing <laughs> on the cake for me for summer fishing. Um, it's called Roach Fest, and I caught one roach all week. <laughs> so, yeah, but no, it was, it fished fantastic. It was, it was me. I just couldn't get my head around it. I, yeah. You know, I was watching people catch fish around me all every day and I'm thinking what am I doing wrong here you know you start questioning yourself and don't know really I'd, I caught a few fish but nothing like I should have done um, yeah enjoyed it good bunch of lads up there as well they're all friendly and um, I had one day where I got crayfished out but other than that don't know it doesn't seem the crayfish wasn't an issue this year you know can't even ex you can't even blame them then can you no, that's no. what I'm on. That's what I'm on. I, I, I just lost. Kind of driving home, thinking, what am I doing with myself here? I can't catch skimmers. I just, I don't know whether I smelled it wrong to a skimmer or something. I don't know. 
But um, it goes like that, though, doesn't it? Yeah. And sometimes you just you know you, you know you're on them and you can catch blindfolded, and other times you think, God, what's going on? Why can't I? Mm. Yeah, I, it's, it's match fishing, isn't it? It's, if you pleasure fish, it just doesn't happen. But it's always like that. Right. So we had a so go back to the division two. You, a tackle and dive tackle and baits are now in the division one, and that's on the trend. Yeah. Is, that, is that slightly later on in the year? No, it's earlier. Oh, earlier. Yeah, so that's in August. So right. I don't really clash with anything. So. Well, so, I've yeah. got a funny feeling it's going to clash with our August festival. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. I've changed the dates. Yeah, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> that's the thing. Oh no. Um, so yeah, that's obviously August. So we've got the winter league coming up, and then hopefully we'll have a full winter league this year. Hay Jacks and March opens, and yeah. So go. So let's go forward to the winter league then, because let me try and get. Let me try and remember from the last two podcast seasons, because you explained this to me twice and I've forgotten. Is it six rounds? Yeah, so we have six rounds yeah. and six practice matches before each round. In, yeah, interspersed. Mm. And the top two? Top two teams go, go through, Go through to yeah. the Angling Trust uh, yeah, Winter League fine. Final. Yeah. yeah, as far as we know, it's at the drains. And yeah. As, as far as we know, I don't, that's not been confirmed yet, oh, but yeah. everyone's thinking that's what it is. Up so. to two years ago, it was always held on the drains. That you yes, could, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. So, and then it's also on, it's on decoy as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm pretty sure it will be again. Yeah, Anglia Trust haven't actually said that yet. So, does that mean when you start roping in people like Winnie? No, no. <laughs> yeah, we got we got a pretty good commercial team. I mean, we did well in the commercial national. We were kilo or under a kilo yes, off winning that. So That's right. Yeah, we got some good commercial anglers. Yeah, um, it's nice having the um, you know the final here if you if you get through i think the biggest problem for the local teams is trying to pick five to yeah. fish the drains because you know everyone wants to fish the drain yeah. which is it's horrible you have people falling out and i remember two years ago it was a bit know. stressful for you because you had to pick five and it was mm. yeah and everyone deserves to have a go don't they? yeah it's hard yeah. it's hard okay so did so was the weekend the first winter league First as first one of six. Yeah, so yeah. just gone was the first round. So weekend before last, we had the practice match. That's right. Which yeah. was uh, pretty poor. So where was it held this weekend? So it we had gone. five sections at Littleport on the ooze and five sections at Ely Beat on the ooze. So Is that earlier than normal? No, it feels early. It's the same weekend. Is Everyone's it really? the same. Yeah, it feels, feels like everything's come forward, but yeah. it hasn't. It just It's just the weather, I think. Um, and everything's just come quick, but... He fished hard in the practice match. I think John Taylor won the match. No, he didn't. Sorry, Damien Green won the match with £12 odd uh, from an MPEG. And then John Taylor had £12 from E section, which is near the Littleport Bridge, but Ely beat side. Um, and then all the frame come from there, and the rest of it was really tough. But lots of sort of three, four pounds. On paper, it doesn't look too bad, but it's just, I don't know, it's just tough. Yeah. It was tough. And then this week, we also had a load of rain during the week, so everyone was like, oh, I wonder what that's going to do. Saturday, absolutely hammered down. It rained all day Saturday, didn't it? Proper rained. Yeah. And um, got there, and it was it was moving, and it had a horrible wind on it as well. So that was a nightmare. But it fished really well in places. So was Saturday the match day or Sunday? Sunday. Because it was really windy yesterday, yeah, wasn't it? it was, yeah. Yeah. So I drew the same section as I did the week before, believe it or not. Yeah, so I was in A section at Ely Beat. The week before, I was third in my eight pegs with 4.13, and this week, I was second in my eight pegs with £3.12. So I don't know why, but that, that was tough. But it was it was quite... Feeder or pole? I call them feeder. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't catch anything on the pole. After about 20 minutes, I thought, oh, no. So it's, it's one of them venues you can sort of, you have to be really aggressive because you, you need to sort of claim what fish are there into your swim. So as a, like, as a match venue, it's, it's nice because you sort of park behind your peg or behind you on the road. You've got nice, comfortable banks. It's top fives deep. It's, you know, it's, it's just nice yeah. fishing. Roach, skimmers, odd perch, there's an odd tench kicking about, odd eels. It's just a real when when you're on the fish there, you can't get be better than that. Do you know what I mean? Top fives venue, nice stamp fish, not many tiny little crappy little fish. Just you know, you have to do it properly. You have to get your rig right, and you have to catch the fish. Um, but <clears throat> for some reason, Ely Beat didn't really fish. Um, 
the MPEG on my section, PEG A1, which is an MPEG. I was A8, but then you got another section carried on. So even though you're ending your section, you've got another bloke sat next to you in the next section. <laughs> oh, so, God. Yeah. Um, you needed to draw a few ends. Yeah. Be interested to see how many MPEGs won their sections um, this this week. I haven't really looked at the results, really. But... Um, so Liam Dyler won my section with seven pounds from the MPEG, um, which helps. He's done well, seven pounds. Um, I had three twelve. There's a three nine, a three pound, and two two ten. So it could have gone anywhere. Yeah, I just kept. I just. I'd never want to catch seven pound, but um, the last sort of hour, you, all of a sudden the fish can just turn up, yeah. just start feeding for some reason. And um, I kept putting a ball in on the pole line and trying it, battling against the wind. You know, I tried heavier rigs, lighter rigs, over depth, off the bottom, plopping balls in, throwing balls in, all sorts, and just nothing really happened. But every time I went on the feeder, I could get a little run of roach. I was just mad. They can catch roach on the feeder under the tree, you know, literally touching the branches as it's going in. Yeah, you can't catch them on the pole. So, but it was. Is what it was, second in the section. Um, team wise, uh, we were third on the day. So I'm looking, oh, I was looking over your shoulder. Yeah, then, we the were results. third. Um, close again, though. Very close. You never really get someone run away with it. You don't get a real low score. Sometimes on the drains or march, you can get a team like 21 points. Yeah. Whereas I've with here, Stan's won it with 33, second was Hot Rods 34, we were third with 36, and Image were fourth with 37. Whew. So, yeah. you know, one result either way for any of the teams and they could have won it. Yeah. You know, it's frustrating because, you know, I mean, we didn't have any bonus fish, we never had a tench or anything like that, but then, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. So there's eight teams this year. Is that an extra one? Or no, two? there was eight last year. Was there? Yeah, there was eight last year. Is that the new Peterborough team? In its yeah, Crest of Peterborough, oh, yeah. that's good, yeah. Fantastic. They've got like yeah. 18 anglers now. Have they? Wow. All want to fish, all yeah. keen. Um, Mark One have obviously got new anglers as well, which is great. Yeah. So it's only good for the league. So it's Mark One, what, white and black? Yeah. 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 Um, stands. Everyone's got new anglers, really. So what, go run through the teams again. you got... So Stan J Gold, yeah. which is Polly and Nuddy and uh, Meady, Watlin, all, all them lads. And then you've got Hot Rods, obviously Brown and Hot Rods, um, us, and then Image. I think Image are the team to beat. They're a um, very strong team, you know, through the old Essex County boys and good local anglers as well, young, some good young anglers as well. Um, and Peterborough, obviously... Mark one, well, they you know they know what the, the crack is, yeah. Um, and obviously stands A and, and Mark one B, so strong league, you know. Anyone can take points off anyone in this league, and um, now we've got basically five rounds on the drain, so it's a bit different. You look, that's where your team comes into its own a bit. Uh, yeah, we yeah. do. Yeah, you're very strong on the drains. Yeah, well, yeah. all the teams are strong on the drains. You yeah, know, all you must them. be. F- Third place is not a bad start. No, it's, no, we were fourth last year. Yeah. So um, we're sort of happy with third, but I think everyone's the same. You know, yeah. could have done a shoulda, yeah. woulda, coulda. It's, uh, it's one of them. You're in it by being third. Yes. You're not out and of it. We're ahead of Image, which yeah. is, you know, I think if I think they'll be the team to beat, to be honest. But um, we'll see. We started. The first round's always difficult as well because... The practice match clashes with Riverfest finals and um, Bow Beach, and it just the end of September. There's still so much on, and yeah. people are still on holiday and things like that. Like we had four anglers couldn't fish this week, um, so straight away you sort of um, how can I put it? You sort of everyone's practicing a bits and bobs, but you, whereas this week now we've got like fourteen anglers, fifteen anglers to pick ten from. So it's, it's, it's not every Whereas other week. Last, was, the first round, the team picked itself, yeah. if you know what I mean, because of who could make it. But I can't, You have a few weeks off, don't you, throughout the next two or three no. weeks, don't you? No, don't is have it, any, any, t- any Sundays. Oh, off. right, so it's every Sunday. Every it? Sunday now. So w- whenever you hear that the East Midlands Winter League has started, you know it's 13 weeks till Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, oh right, I've got. I forgot. Yeah, so you obviously have practice match, yeah. match, practice match, match. Yeah. So we've got Benick this week. Practice match. Um, I'll be Benick really. Yeah. It'll be weedy. It'll be clear, but there'll be fish to catch. A few tench about. Bit of a walk. The walk's not too bad on this one because you know it's still a bit firm underneath. It's it's after Christmas when it's been absolutely <laughs> it's hammered. Been claggy. Yeah. And the tractor's been up there a few <laughs> times. And you're like more just skating to your peg than you are walking, but. I think it'd be all right. 60 pegs, 60, 64 pegs in a row, which is good. Yeah. So there's only two M pegs. Oh, there's four because there's some wires. And then there's cop holders in for this one, which can be interesting fishing. I know that there's two M pegs there, so it'll be interesting. That's near the old um, Second World in, War machine gun. That's it, yeah. Pill, at least pill you box come thing, in, right, yeah. If you're going yeah. out of Benick, it's straight away, or yeah. as you're coming in, it's sort of on that bend right next to the road um so that'd be good and then we've got march for two weeks obviously we've got the um rounding power partner on the saturday and then our practice match on the sunday then the following week is the march one and then we're back to bennick again yeah then back to march and then the last round is on the drains depending on which ones are fishing best so 20 foot I would say Benick will be in, I would say it'll be March will be in, and I'd say Factory Bank will be in. Yeah. But we'll see, we'll see which is available. It's going to be interesting to look at uh, El Course the Nina game in March because I know we've got a theory that these fish are the same fish but they're getting bigger. Yeah. So, yeah. These think, skimmers, um, are these skimmers, are they a pound plus now or are those roach a bit bigger? I don't know, it'd be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, and it's had a break as well, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, there just haven't been any roach anywhere this year which is quite worrying but... Oh, I guarantee you'll be in March. Yeah, yeah there'll be some there. Yeah, it'll be good stuff. And of course, it's been quite a, a warm Indian summer, isn't it? So we've had a, a prolonged spell, so the water temperature's a bit up and the weed's yeah. still quite So I luxurious. keep yawning. Well, as soon as I start, I start yawning my head yeah. off while I'm going to sleep. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Have you got any more match results down there? I haven't, to be honest. Um, the, the Well, actually, Saturday, the Whittlesey match has started as well. So, That's right, I saw Jeff Tuttlebee yeah. put some stuff on Facebook. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know who come what, when, when. All I know that um, Chris Daniels, who's not fished for like 20 years, he's, he's been pleasure fishing. I know he listens to the podcast as well, and he's been sort of practising and getting into it and upgrading his gear, and, and um, first match back, won it. So Nice. Not a bad start, is it, eh? No. So well done, Chris. Yeah. Um, well, that's what we'll do, won't we? Once we get going, we'll have all the local match results over the next yeah. next few weeks and months. And when, yeah. um, if anyone's got anything in particular they want us to mention, just get in touch with Alex at the shop or messages via uh, the Facebook page. It would be good to have some mm -hmm. tackle shop, like you have done. And we'll try and mention a few things. My phone's been going while we've been talking. Yeah. I'm going to tell people what's going on. I'm supposed to be going to Lincoln to do yeah. a Pike Anglers Club talk, but their projector isn't compatible with my laptop. Oh, dear. Yes. So... They're in Currys at this moment in time. Hopefully buying a more modern laptop because they've realised the laptop's about 10, 12, 15 years old anyway. Right. So I could be shooting off to Lincoln in a minute, or I might not be, but um, mm. hence the phone's been rattling and that's what you'll hear on the audio is my phone going off. So, uh, or me tapping. And you tapping, yeah, a bit like yeah. Spolt used to have to tell you, that's the one, yeah. Morse code, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, I, I did the World Predator Classic England qualifier game this year. Any good? And we were fourth. That's better than last, isn't it? From the year before. <laughs> Two first year was nearly last, yeah. Oh. Second year was halfway up. We were second half of the first day. Um, but we couldn't get the perch that we needed to uh, win it. So we came fourth. That was good. There mm. must have been nearly 50 boats. 48, I think. Mm. So the winners of that go through to the final in Holland, which is next weekend. Right. So next year, hopefully... We'll get in the top three. That's the plan. So that's, that was really good and very exciting stuff and quite tiring, but mm. that was good. But um, yeah, it's about as much as I get to uh, competition-wise. I did fish Perch Mania two weeks ago and we came 10th. Perch Mania. Yes, which was, again, 30 boats. So that wasn't too bad. We're yeah. Grafham. Grafham. Yeah. Uh, we're not Perch anglers, really. So we did that to practice on the Perch. So that was okay, getting better. So... Um, it's all good stuff, and uh, yeah, do a bit of competition fishing every now and again, which is nice. And uh, it's not, it's I think it breeds a certain type of person, like the match fishing mm -hmm. that you guys do, and the commercial fishing with the matches here. 
these matches that I go into on the lures, it's it's good because everyone's very friendly and it's a bit mm -hmm. of banter and it's mm -hmm. it's very open afterwards and people are very good to sort of spill the beans how they've been catching. And uh, it's what we want to do in fishing, isn't it? I think yeah. it's really important that um, we don't get wrapped up in this kind of secret squirrel fraternity and we all we all help each other. It'll be good. Right, buddy. I think we're nearly there. Yeah. 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 A bit more to comment next week, can't we? Get a few more match results. I think the main, main, sorry, Ramsey matches are sort of hopefully get a few more on a Sunday now and they sort of start going up and up. Yeah. And the Wednesday ones start going up and up as well. So, um, it just feels like we're getting back into the swing of things properly after COVID, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a few guests on as well because um, I think we're going to try and do most of the podcasts from in here. So, it would work mm -hmm. quite well to tag mm -hmm. a third body on the end and we'll get a few people in. Yeah. them actually in on the podcast this year i'll tell you who i met on the river banks was bob bailey oh yeah yeah doing a lot of coaching for st ives yeah doing well in the year yeah so i did say to try and get him on at some point because I, I did mean to get him on last year but um it was very difficult with yeah. all the restrictions so i think he's going to be listening so bob i haven't forgotten so we'll try and get you on at some point and it, people just need to remember that we we do do other things and we forget so if we haven't got someone on and we've promised to, just drop us a line and nudge us because uh, it's all a bit hectic sometimes trying to fit everything in and we will try and get as many people on as we can. Right, buddy. What was that? That was a box going down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't a body. No. No. Right, we better wrap it up. So yeah. we've started again, season three. Thanks, everybody, for watching this one. We'll be back every week on the Wednesdays. And this has been Tales in the Tackle Shop, a Fenland Fishing TV production.